Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Back in our Father's Word, book of Hebrews, we're going to pick it up here in the 11th chapter and the 30th verse in a moment. <clears throat> Remember, this is the faith chapter. And there's one thing I want you to never forget about this chapter is verse 6. It's, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him, our Father. For, that, uh, for he that cometh to God must believe. If you expect to get through, you've got to believe that he is, that he's, he is our Father, he's real, he's there, and that he is a rewarder of them. If you expect a reward, you'd better know this. If you expect to be rewarded by Almighty God, you better believe faith is the key. And uh, a rewarder of them that, that's a condition now, that do what? That diligently seek Him. That means you study the word He sent. You seek His plan. His plan for the universe, His plan for the earth, His plan for heaven, his overall plan that covers everything. So uh, that is it. And remember back in verse 1, the substance as it is written there, the, now the faith is the substance of things hoped for. That substance, the word in the Greek is it's a deed, like to a piece of property. It's yours. That's what faith does for you. That's why it's so powerful. That's why it's so important. If you want to be rewarded by God's ear, that means He hears you, then you will exercise that faith. Now, we come down to the, uh, many of the uh, great people of God's Word that He utilized. We finished in the last lecture with Moses, who by faith he passed through the Red Sea. Faith opened the thing. And, uh, and they went across on dry land. But the Egyptians trying to follow them and overtake, a saying to do, were, they were drowned. They, their chariots, horses, the whole army, gone. That's what faith will do for you. That's God's promise to you. So we pick it up then in chapter 11, verse 30. Let's go with the faith chapter. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Now, did going around them seven days cause them to fall? No. Did, did the uh, priest's horns, uh, blow, ram's horns blowing before the parade, did that cause it? No. God caused it. They didn't touch the wall. God brought the wall down, but the passing seven times and the ram's horns, they were obeying God. And when you obey God, you're going to be rewarded. So it was God, because of their faith, that brought the world walls of Jericho tumbling down. And um, verse 31, By faith the harlot Rahab perished, not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. You know, um, naturally, many people disagree with me. That's fine. But Rahab was not a harlot. Businessmen called her a harlot because she was a better businesswoman and they were a businessman. The secret to the whole thing is where did she hide these two spies? She hid them on her rooftop. But under what? Rows and rows of flax. 
that she used to weave this precious fine linen that she was famous for producing that um, put many men out of business that tried to compete. And naturally, as, as is the unfortunate thing of time, anytime a woman is very, very successful, there's going to be somebody say, well, you know how she did it, you know, with implication. That same thing stuck with Rahab, even though she is in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that red thread, which still goes to the, to the house of Ulster, even to this day, the blessings of God. Verse 32, And what shall I more say? Well, what else can we say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and um, and of Samson, and Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophecies. All those things that happened. You know, Gideon was a little bit um, uh, doubtful. But God still honored him. Well, how is that? It's where the term putting a fleece out comes from, is with, with uh, Gideon. He said, Lord, I'll do that, but if I'm going to put this fleece out, I want the ground to be wet and the fleece dry. And sure enough, that night, that's what happened. And then he still said, Lord, I'm just a little shaky on this. Now I want the fleece wet or vice versa. And sure enough, it was. And finally, Gideon got his horses together and uh, did what God would have him do. And Samson, what, what, a, what a life, what a hero of our people. And, and you can never forget little David. David, who was um, a um, sheep herder, had cared for a little fellow, the youngest boy in the family, took care of the sheep, killed lions, bears, uh, with what? With his slingshot. God gave him a gift with that little jewel. And of course, he, his father told him to take uh, food out to um, Jesse Wood, out to his other brothers, and here the whole army of Israel was shaken in their boots as boom, 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 the old giant uh, Goliath was marching on a hill right by, challenging their champion. And little old David says, well, hey, hey, let, let me go get him. And they said, we don't have any armor small enough to put on you. He said, I don't need it. Don't need armor. And finally they said, well, you, you go ahead. And of course, when the, when the Philistine saw him coming, the giant, oh, he was angry. What have you sent out? I will have you bloom, bloom, and on and on. And David said, Almighty God is with me. Out of the mouth of babes, this is where the term comes from. Out of the mouth of David. I don't care if it was a giant standing before him. I don't care if it was the whole Phoenician army. David said, God is with me. God instructed him. God sent him. He stopped at the little brook, picked up five stones. All it took was one. And he put it right into the forehead of the giant and then cut the giant's head off with his own sword, a, a huge thing. And the rest fled. So... There you had that young lad. But don't ever forget how it came to be. It was David's faith in God. And the words from his mouth make up the saying, Have you never heard out of the mouths of babes? What did the babe say? God's giving you to me. And, and God had already told David. David didn't doubt it. He believed it. And he took the giant. And, um, and, and so it is that with God's help, don't ever underestimate what one can accomplish if you put your effort to it. If you sincerely, diligently 
seek after God, his word, his plan, he can certainly use you. Okay, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions. Uh, who, who stopped the mouth of lions? Daniel's faith in the lion's den. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, the lions just weren't hungry that night. Well, what happened when they threw the other attendants in? They, they were gone just like that. God intervened, and God controlled the animals, controlled the, the uh, lion's mouths, where Daniel was perfectly safe in that lion's den. Why? Because of faith. Do you think that if, David, if Daniel had been a doubter and was cast in there with those vicious animals, if he had doubted God, what would Daniel be against a den full of, of, of beasts? He would have been mincemeat, but there was one thing that made a difference, and don't you ever forget it. That's faith. Faith in knowing God sent him there, God would protect him, God would take care of him. Verse 34 to continue, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weaknesses were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned the flight turn to flight the enemies of the aliens. Um, they, they became brave. Why? Because God was with them. They had God's assurances. You know, how are you doing today? You, you've also got God's assurances. You've got all the promises that God sent you in this book called the Word of God. And, and uh, if you do as He says... And if you exercise diligently that faith to know, to seek, then if he can use you, he'll let you know. And you will accomplish what he would have you do without any questions asked. Because he will take care of the things that you cannot. He will plan things that you would never foresee that will be taken care of. Presto serving God and having faith and receiving his reward, that is to say success in bringing forth his word, is a fantastic thing. He will never leave you hanging out. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. We'll be covering that in the very next chapter of this great book of Hebrews. Let's go with the next verse then, verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. In other words, knowing eternal life is what is important, and so it is. Um, uh, both Mary and Martha received their brother Lazarus at the hand of Christ, raised from the dead, four days in the tomb bound head to foot, his legs even bound. But yet when Christ gave the order, Lazarus, come forth, uh, he came forth, however you wish to say, by the mighty hand of Almighty God. And then he said, unwrap him. Okay. So uh, when you follow our Heavenly Father, he hears you, knows you, he will take care of you. Verse 36, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Uh, there were whippings and beatings, and, and on it went. 37, they were stoned. They were sawn asunder, cut in two, were tempted were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. There was times it was pretty rough. 
but their faith never wavered, those that overcame. God always brought them through it. Verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. This world age certainly was not. They wandered in the deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. We, have, we, we, through documentaries, have found signs of these wanderings. You know, once man visits a place, there's going, he's going to leave some kind of mark, whether he intends to or not, that he was there, and basically what he did while he was there. And you find these wanderings through the waterways of the world, for that was the highway of that time, that... Um, God led them, and how precious it was to have God with them, caring for them, and, uh, and so it was. Verse 39, and these all, having obtained a good report, they what? Obtained a good report through faith, through what? Through faith, received not the promise. I mean, they, they didn't receive it because it wasn't time yet. But at resurrection, which happened really when they passed, they were there. They received it. Forty, God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Uh, in other words, uh, foreseen, yes. Complete, yes. God arranged it. There you have the faith chapter. Just remember this, verse 6. Don't always be willing to go there if, if you feel God is not hearing you. And read the sixth verse of this chapter. It is impossible to please God without faith. If you expect to be rewarded, if you want a gift from God, you will study and have that faith and diligently seek Him what it is he would have for you to do. That's a powerful chapter. It shows you the power of faith. When you, when you come right down to it, cut away all the slack. Faith delivered the people through the Red Sea. Faith brought Moses and all others on through, Abraham and Sarah. Too old to have a child, faith brought forth Isaac. And, and he be, would become as numerous as the stars of heaven and sand of the sea in the people called Israel, the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Faith brought them through. Faith is very necessary, beloved, for you to be pleasing to God and to have him reward you, your family, and what it is you need in your life. He, when you love him, when you have faith in him, it makes all the difference. Uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want you to know what this word race is in, in the Greek tongue. It's anon. Agon, rather. And uh, it's where the Olympics started. So it, it is a race, an actual foot race. And what, what is this business of a cloud of witnesses? Paul spoke colloquial Greek. And what is colloquial Greek? It's much like you would use if you were to say, did you see that cloud of locusts? Did you see that cloud of blackbirds? You're talking about a throng of people. What he's saying is, put on this faith and, and let your thoughts of sin in the world drop from you because that's a weight that's going to make, cause you to lose the race. You've got to get rid of all that through faith. 
in him. And, and um, let the ways of the world fall by the wayside. And you serve him. You, be, you run that race and you run it to win. You run it to completeness. Because you take those weights and cast them aside. But many, the reason I mentioned the, the terminology he utilizes a great cloud of witnesses to fly away, no, to run a foot race. But so many people take the same statement in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and say, and here they're gathering in a cloud to fly away. No, that's not what it means. It means they're a cloud that will be righteous, a throng of people that God will use. And certainly to, to use them, be why? Because he loves them. And because they have faith, because they follow him, because they diligently search after him. So let this put to rest one and for all times. This cloud of witnesses is a throng of people gathered together, a lot of people, to run a foot race. That foot race is the race of life itself. As you race through life, you race to win. Why? Because you have God's support. What a, what a verse to follow the great faith chapter with. Faith is a powerful, powerful tool. And so it is. Uh, verse 2 to continue. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I mean, under, really, read, don't read over that. Jesus is the author of, what, of, of the faith that comes forth, the finisher of it. Why? But he had enough faith that, um, that um, he endured the cross. He did it. He could have called down 10,000 angels and wiped that whole bunch out. Just bam. But no, he, he did it to destroy death, which is to say the devil, but also for you that would follow him, that would have faith in him in our Heavenly Father, that you would endure because He endured. And again, He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. So you hang with Him. If He endured the cross and, and despising the shame, I mean, He was spit upon, shouted at, talked like, uh, uh, like He was... Uh, a heathen rather than the son of the living God. And yet he was the author and finisher, don't forget that, of faith. Verse 3, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Uh, in other words, uh, you want to lose the race? You faint and drop out, and you're go they're gone. And you're still sitting here wondering what happened. You don't listen to the contradiction of sinners. And um, you don't grow weary. Why, why is he saying this? Christ died on the cross. Christ shed blood on the cross, and you're wimping out out here over a little trouble in life. You, you can't handle it. You can't cut it. You can't win a race because you've got no faith. You want to be real careful, my friend. If you want rewards from God, that wins races. You will have that faith. And what he endured for you. And then don't ever even think about wimping out Well, it's a little bit hard. It's not like being nailed to the cross. 
verse 4. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. He did. He had blood running from each place. He was nailed plus the corn of, thorn of crowns they placed on his forehead, bringing that blood down from his face. Did he whimper? No, he did not complain. He knew what he was doing. He was paying that price. And there he sits today at the right hand of God, Almighty God, on that throne, taking care of what you cannot if you have the faith to ask for it, to reward you if you deserve it. And you're not going to deserve it if you start wimping out because of a little pain. <clears throat> Verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. A lot of people misunderstand this. It's called tough love, and when God thumps their gourd, they, they feel like he's putting them off. No, all he wants is your attention. He can, he can, God will use tough love. If he loves you, he will correct you. If he does not love you, he will not correct you. You can just go on and go to hell if you want to. But when God loves you, he's, when he sees you going off the path, unintentionally usually he's going to thump your gourd and he's going to thump it pretty good sometimes that's just like you practicing tough love to someone you're trying to help sometimes it's required sometimes that's all that will get it done verse 6 for whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. Uh, I mean, he can pop you pretty good. But what's that a sign of? That he loves you. He certainly hasn't given up on you. He feels you're worth it for a little correcting. And that is just life itself, my friend. We all need help occasionally because we will get sidetracked. And being sidetracked can cause a lot of pain. He doesn't want to see you have that pain. He would rather correct you and bring you back into the fold whereby you're not hurt. This is, the, is this different than any parent would be? Of course it's not. A parent will always practice tough love on a child they love. If they don't love them, maybe they won't. <clears throat> or maybe they don't know how. Maybe they don't have faith. But God, when he corrects you, and, and uh, like I said, he, he can thump your old gourd pretty good sometimes. You better shake your head and say, thank you, Father. Kiss the paddle and get going. And, and you know, you'll know what's wrong. For he'll, he'll make sure you do. And then you straighten up your act and get it together. Verse 7. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? It just doesn't happen. Okay, you, That correction and love, tough love, that's what real love is. Many people, you could ask them to define love. They couldn't. They, they would not know where to begin. But love is loving someone enough that you've got to get a little tough every once in a while. That's real love. And real love also is listening. Listening to the trouble of others. And... Uh, many times, um, as, as there's an old colloquial saying in America, never judge a man until you've walked in his moxins for three days. In other words, look at 
every side of it. A wise person never makes judgment in hearing just one side. Only a fool will do that. You want to hear both sides or you're not fit to make a judgment. Why? Because you don't know what you're talking about. So therefore, love, true love, causes that involvement that uh, can bring to pass tough love, and that's good. Verse eight, but if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. You're, you're illegitimate, you don't fit. You don't fit into God's plan. And, and certainly, um, um, it's, it would appear that you don't care. That, that's why it's so important that if you want to be a part, then you'd better care, you better have faith, and you'd better love Almighty God. And when He corrects you again, don't get bitter and run away. Then certainly you've got, you're headed in a very wrong direction. But let him know you love him. Do not be illegitimate as far as heaven is concerned and know the right path. Verse nine, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence we, we loved them for it. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? And live what? Live eternally. So that's why it's so important to be pleasing to Almighty God, to follow Him, to obey Him, to have faith in knowing that He'll let you know if you're doing something terribly wrong, different than he would have it. Don't worry, he'll get your attention. And certainly then you get your act together. That's our Heavenly Father caring about you. Why? Probably because you have faith. And then it is possible for God to love you and to assist you and mostly reward you because you have that faith. All right, bless your hearts. Don't miss the next lecture. Listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, all over Canada. If the Spirit moves and you have a question, share it. Once you do that, please, again, never ask a question about a particular reverend, denomination, or organization. We're not going to judge people, but we will spiritually discern whether Somebody has something to say, that, whether it's according to God's Word or not. And we will listen to that that is true, and we will put aside that that is false. That's a gift from God, is to have the unction deliberately to know truth from fiction when you hear it, or at least enough unction that it puts you on guard something's wrong. That's a gift from God. Always thank him for that. Those of you that listen by shortwave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you. 
and your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Again, always a pleasure. Got a prayer request? You do not need the number or the address. Don't ever, ever let somebody say you can't pray. You don't have to pray out loud, and they don't know whether you're praying or not. I don't care whether you're in school, whether you're we're any location. You can always pray silently to Almighty God. You don't have to screw your face all up and look real holy. You just think to the Father and He hears you. Always. Why? Well, if you've got faith, He knows very well where you are and how He helps you when it's needed. Father, around the globe we come. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father. Touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, we got, we have uh, Woody from Arkansas. And thank you for enjoying the teaching. Is, is everyone from paradise going to be in the millennium? Also, when is Sat where is Satan now? In Revelation 12, 7 through 9, does it mean Satan is now going from heaven to earth? Not, not right now, but when Michael throws him out, we'll know. Because that's when he comes, that's when Satan comes as the false messiah. And certainly we will know that. Everyone, uh, usually that's in paradise, they will participate in the millennium. There will be certain parts of heaven that will be closed for that thousand years, meaning no one can enter until the second resurrection. And then only will they enter if they overcome. Okay, this would be Janet from Washington. Uh, thank you for waking me up to the truths of God. What a dumb bunny I've been. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that. You know, it takes time. I must uh, straighten out the wrong truths I was told about. In my ch to my children, I didn't teach them the real truth. I know God gave you the knowledge to know the Bible without looking it up. How blessed you are. Well, I appreciate God's help. My question is, how old were you when you were able to do this like I'm sure like the disciples were able to do? It amazes me. Uh, what, what it, you know, when you've t taught as many years as I have, naturally practice makes, uh, is a great helper, okay, because you uh, always grow when you love the Lord. And um, so uh, how old was I? I'm, I've been teaching for, I'll just say, about 60 years. And I've enjoyed every year of it. Uh, and But, but um, to say that, um, well, anyway, let that do it. Hank's from, from, I don't know. I think this, oh, it's thanks, Gladys. Gladys, you're welcome. And um, Shepherd's Chapel, some people I know pronounce Jesus' name as Yahweh. Is that correct? Absolutely not. Yahweh, V-E-H, is God's name. That's the Father's name, Yahweh. Jesus is Yahweh's Savior, pronounced Yeshua in, in the Hebrew tongue, all right? Yahweh the Father. You know, W-E-H is very wrong. There are two separate acrostics for a double witness in the manuscripts that let you know that definitely it is Yahweh. And, and, and a man can't change it. Five times in the book of Esther, in the acrostic, of the sacred name, you have the correct pronunciation. And many might say, well, how do you know it's W or V? Because the word and, V, doesn't have a W. It's V. Okay. So to answer your question, Yeshua is what Jesus' name is. It's, it's the same name as Joshua. 
In English, we say Joshua, but really, you're saying Jesus, okay, because it is Yeshua. Uh, Peggy from Texas. I have studied with you for three years. My questions are, whose virgin daughters Jeremiah took to Egypt first and then over to the Caucasus, went to Europe? One being Scotta, and that's where Scotland came from. She was of the royal priesthood. Um, I take notes, and at first you said that they were the daughters of uh, Zedekiah, and then later you said they were Philip's, and just recently you said they were Zacharias. Please clarify. Well, the, uh, Philip's daughters and the, and the um, daughters that Jeremiah took are certainly two different groups of people. Uh, Philip's daughters were four virgins that never knew a man. And they were prophetess. They were teachers. And God used them to teach a great deal of the area from Gaza all, all the way up through Zidon uh, and converted a lot of people. But th those were that set of daughters you will find them written in the New Testament. But the daughters of Zedekiah, uh, that's a different story. We go by history a great deal there and how true history is when you go to the depth to search diligently to understand. Um, Evangeline from Virginia can you please explain to me what Halloween is? Is Halloween Halloween? Uh, that's what it was originally. And, and um, uh, it has turned into what it is. But it was holy evening. It was supposed to be a, a thing of worship. And it got, it got turned away from it a little bit. <clears throat> okay, Rhonda from Florida. Does the Bible say anything about women pastors, ministers? Where can I find this in the Bible? <clears throat> well, I just mentioned one set. That's the daughters of Philip. And, but it is obvious when you read what the Holy Spirit will do in Acts chapter 2 concerning the Pentecostal tongue. It is an unknown. You won't find the word unknown there. It's just the opposite. It's understood by every language of the world. That's why it's called cloven, because it goes out in every direction. But it says, both my sons and my daughters shall prophesy and teach. So I, I don't know. People can argue with God if they want to. But in the end generation, there will be women teaching, period. That's God's word. Wilma from Oregon. I've been a Christian for many years and belong to a non-denominational church. My church is now beginning to accept homosexuality and same-sex marriage. I don't know what to do. Do I stay with my church or leave? Well, I, I never tell anybody where where they should go to church, God usually gives unction. I would say in my own heart and mind, you've already had the unction of what to do. They call it making tracks. Okay? And, um, but, but that's, you have to decide. God may have you there for a purpose to drag some miserable wretch out of that mess. That you have to let God decide. But if it becomes a hardship, then make tracks. Elizabeth from California. I thank God for you and your staff. Well, thank you. Uh, when, when we have problems, I go to God and that works for me. But is going to a counselor or psychiatrist to talk through our problems okay as a Christian? If you have mental problems, or a hang up, then certainly you need help. But uh, as a Christian, always go to a Christian counselor 
or a Christian psychiatrist. Maybe there's not that many of them, but you will find one. And uh, then, then when you need that help, well, certainly you have it there. But God's Word is one of the best counselors you can have. Elizabeth from California. When we ask the Lord to put the blood of Jesus all over our house, does this mean all over the furniture and things? Or were specific, our family, our children? No, you, all you do is you anoint your home with the oil of our people. That's olive oil. And in doing that, that's, that you are obedient. You're anointing it. And uh, many people will say, well, I didn't know that Christians were supposed to anoint. And you would show your ignorance because you, it would mean you don't even know what Christ means. Christos, Christ, means the anointed one. And the etymology of the name comes from uh, rubbing as anointing with the oil of our people. Also, the suit of armor and anointing oil, do you th ask the Lord to put these things all over? Not, you don't have to all over. It's not necessary. God can take care of that. Usually, it's whatever is hurting. If your home is hurting, anoint the house, just, just the, the threshold, the doorpost, whatever, and ask Christ to protect anything negative coming into your home. And, or your family and so forth. Uh, you don't want to drench the whole house down with oil, okay? Not necessary. Jackie from Oregon. Why did Jesus say to those he healed, don't tell anyone? And then those people went and told everyone anyway. Well, because it, it wasn't quite time for him to be known as Messiah. And uh, that that uh, didn't really take place until after the crucifixion, quite frankly. But uh, th then it was time that uh, the kingdom of God was with us because he was the king and he had resurrected. And being with us, uh, he led. And, and, but these he could not help but having compassion to heal. And it was a teaching aid for also for his followers, I'm talking about the disciples, and um, when he asked, but they were so happy about it. You know, if you're paralyzed where you can't even get up, and Christ comes along and touches you, and you can run freely, it's hard to keep that to yourself. You can see that. Okay, They could not help but share it. And I, I know maybe it, it caused some consternation, but it, it was fine. Joy from California. I've been a student of yours for a very long time. My question is, is it okay to not attend a funeral of a family member because it is too far and too costly? You know, you have to use common sense in all things. In the first place, you know the family member is already with the father you would only be doing it to assist the family that's there. But sometimes in hard times, we have to let the cost of something have a great deal to do with, with uh, our expenses and so forth. So uh, the answer is no, you do not have to go. And with that explanation where it's clearly explained, you just don't have the funds to do it, then that should happy the family. It would definitely happy the deceased one because they're with the father uh, uh, backing you up. Irvin, or, or should, can be. Irwin Irvin from South Carolina. Is Satan supernatural and do you think Satan is in control of the weather? Satan is supernatural, but he absolutely has no control of the weather. Satan has only control over what God's people allow him to have. Otherwise, we have power over him. As, as it is written in Luke uh, chapter 10, beginning with verse 18 and 19, 
God gave you power in His name, through Christ's name, over all of your enemies. Okay. So, um, but, but God is in totally in control. God can alter the weather if He chooses, but that was set up for this earth age, and, and so it is that it continues. Uh, Valerie from Pennsylvania. Valerie, when you're young, if you commit a sin in ignorance and you're not uh, familiar with God's Word, then that is forgivable. So I, I want you to forgive yourself. I want you to put this behind you. And God doesn't want you to bring it up anymore. Okay. Um, it's, uh, a sin in ignorance is really no, no sin. It's a sin, all right, but not to be held accountable on repentance, of course. Sounds like you've done a lot of that. Ed from, uh, I don't know where Ed's from. I'm Afro-American. Can I be one of God's elect? If so, will God use the Gentile to allow the Holy Spirit to speak against the Antichrist? Absolutely. You know, God chooses the kings and queens of the ethnos, they're written in the manuscripts. You'll read of them in um, Revelation chapter 21, verses 20 through 24, where here's all of Israel, and who are these eth nations is ethnos in the Greek tongue, meaning Gentile people, ethnic people. It's where our word ethnic comes from. They are coming there, but they've got kings and queens of their own. And uh, you can call them Zadok or whatever you want to. They're, they're kings and queens of their people. Uh, you also said only the house of Israel can be one of the Zadok. Uh, that, that would be qualified on what I just stated. Can the kings and queens, well, see, you've got it. Can the kings and queens of the ethnos be of the Zadok and help family members, absolutely. They have that same ability. God loves all of his children. God created all of the races on the sixth day, and he looked and it was good. Uh, he only chose, uh, and makes it sound special to some, the nation Israel through which Christ would come, who is the savior of everyone that will listen to him, okay? Uh, Carol from Florida, uh, God bless you, thank you. Thank you for commenting about the staff. Um, so, best help with the following question. Can, God cannot answer the prayers of a believer if they have unforgiveness or resentment toward another person, believer or not. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go along with that. Um, you may have reason to not um, to forgive a person. They may not deserve it. I know that if, if they have repented, it's best to get rid of it. But we have to take the case that Satan, this, there's a con controversy between Satan and God. And many people that follow Satan we're not going to forgive them for following from following Satan and doing his filthy work. That's that's their problem. So there there are extenuating circumstances. Bear in mind what would what did God say about Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. Okay, he, do you think he hated Esau and forgave him? Of course not, because of his attitude and what he did and looks like you've got it here if Esau was hated by God why would he be born to the chosen well he it was his it was his soul from the first earth age he he was hated while he was still in the womb and um, it was call it a learning experience there were two nations and those two superpowers were necessary to bring about the end that's approaching uh, in God's plan. Pat from Iowa, uh, 
One, the one question I would very much like to ask you is if this, when, when this disease progresses, sometimes we get very confused. Now that part of this is cut away and I don't know what the disease is, but I have a pretty good idea. We get very confused. Will Father take that into consideration and still forgive us? Absolutely. Our, our Heavenly Father is the most fairest, loving person you could ever meet in your life. He, he, he is not a respecter of persons. You always get what you got coming to you. And if you are ill whereby you make mistakes, th then that's innocent. He's not going to hold that against you, okay? So I'm glad you love the teaching. Uh, this would be Rad or Rod from Michigan. Um, thank you. Question. When we die, our flesh, we return to our Father instantly. Why did our Savior have to wait three days in the tomb? No, no you, you're mistaken. He waited three days in paradise teaching those on the opposite side. He was in paradise. Uh, not the tomb. And I'm out of time. I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. Makes His day. And when you, I'm talking to you, make His day, boy, is He going to make yours. You can count on it. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we have helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, when you bless God, He's got a way of rewarding you, getting around... Uh, to loving you when you have that faith in Him. Always treasure it. It's great to have faith in Him because you can rest assured of His presence. Um, most important, you stay in His Word every day in His Word. It's a good day. Why Jesus is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you.